Hello everyone. I'm glad to see you on my channel. The story I'm going to tell you today is pure. It is true that all the bad things that happen in life happen for a reason. It is said that we can appreciate the good things, the things when they happen to us. I hope you enjoy this story. I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. Mallory, the parents of the children are here to see you. The nanny entered the group where a woman was explaining something to the children. Yes, let them come in, she was always a friendly woman. And we'll get acquainted, a girl and a young man entered the group. Yes, come in I'll show you around, smiled Mallory. Young moms and dads always came to see who would raise their children. Mallory always smiled with everyone. She was a kind educator. The kids loved her, they reached out to her. Yes, it's nice in your group, said a mom who came today. She went around the group in the bedroom. We're not complaining, said the teacher. Mallory wasn't used to being addressed by her first name yet. She was a young girl who had just graduated from a teacher's college and had come to work here in the kindergarten. The head of the kindergarten, when she saw Mallory, immediately realized that she would make a good teacher. She treated the children well, and with adults immediately established a good relationship. Now that Mallory had been working here for a year, it was clear that she had chosen the right vocation. That evening she looked at the last pupil, who was taken away by his parents, cleaned up everything on the site, returned to the group, gathered all her things, she had to go home. Mallory stepped outside the fence, looked around, smiled. She really liked working here. Slowly, in no hurry to get anywhere, and just as she turned the corner of one of the houses to go into the store on the way, she ran into a young man. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for God's sake. She was frightened. It's all right, he saw that her purse had fallen out of her hands, bent down, picked it up, and when he put it in her hands, he looked into her eyes and froze. What's the matter with you? Mallory looked at him. You have such unusual eyes, he told her, not expecting it of himself. And what is unusual about them? Mallory realized with her head that she had to move on, but she couldn't take a step without knowing what attracted her to this man. They're like two cornflowers. He couldn't take his eyes off her. Thank you. No one has ever said that to me before. She was embarrassed and wanted to move on. My name is Harry, he told her when Mallory's back was already to him. Nice to meet you, she turned and laughed. What's your name? The young man had forgotten where he was going, why he was going. Now he was interested in everything that had to do with this stranger. Mallory, she answered simply. Can I walk you up, Mallory? They were already walking side by side. I think that's what you're doing right now. She held her bag with both hands, walking, looking down at her feet and smiling. You have really beautiful eyes, he told her on the way. I've never seen them like that before, and I've never felt like that before. If I meet a girl, I just avoid her, but here, as if drowned in your eyes, you attracted me. He was walking, saying that, but he was looking ahead. Stop showering me with compliments, Mallory was blushing. Why not say what I think is nice? He didn't understand. Yes, thank you. She saw her house up ahead and thought she had passed all the stores she wanted to go to, which meant there would be nothing to cook for dinner tonight. Would you like me to buy you some ice cream? Harry asked suddenly. Ice cream is fine, but not tonight. I'm really tired from work, so I just want to come home and rest, she told him. They were already near the entrance. Where does such a beautiful girl work? Harry asked. At the daycare center, that's where I'm coming from right now, she admitted to him. Wow, it must be interesting when you're so young and you have so many little kids. He opened the door of her driveway in front of her. Goodbye, see you soon, she stepped inside. Does that mean we'll meet again? He hoped for a positive answer. Of course, if you wish, come tomorrow night to the place where you and I bumped into each other today, and we will definitely bump into each other again. She walked further into the darkness of the entranceway and heard the door close behind her. She entered the apartment, went straight to the kitchen and put the kettle on the stove. After the tea had already been poured into a mug, she sat down in an armchair, covered herself with a soft plate, and began to think about Harry. She liked the young man, too, and she thought that if he came tomorrow, they would definitely have something to work out. Mallory had never dated anyone before because most of her time was taken up with studying, practicing, and preparing for it all. In the morning, she would rush back to her favorite babies. She always had some treats in her pocket for them. Hi! The first thing she saw was Selena, who walked into the group. 
Hello, the girl answered her in a childishly unsure manner. Mallory looked at her white pigtails and tears came to her eyes. It was so sweet, so beautiful, but everyone would know what pain inside Mallory caused, simple white braids. Come on in and see what we have here, she took the girl's hand. Other children began to arrive. Mallory took them all by the hand, led them into the group and sat them on chairs. All day long she read with them, played with them, collected cubes, and did many other things. They also took walks on the plot. And then it was evening again, when they had to go home. Mallory had put on a nice dress today on purpose, in case Harry actually came to the corner of the house where they had met yesterday. She did her usual, walk out of the gate, smiled and walked. She saw the young man from a distance, he was standing and holding flowers in his hands. Could it be? She walked closer and couldn't believe her eyes. There were indeed cornflowers in Harry's hands. Do you like them? He asked her as he held the flowers out to Mallory. You're still asking, of course, where did you get these? She was very surprised. It doesn't matter anymore. The important thing is that you liked it, he answered her. They walked down the sidewalk again, taking the same path as yesterday. So, will you agree to go to the ice cream parlor with me today? Harry asked her. You know, let's go. If yesterday Mallory was a little hesitant, today she realized that the young man really liked her. They came in, made themselves comfortable, the young man placed an order. Now they were eating ice cream, looking at each other and smiling. Tell me something about yourself, Harry asked the girl simply. There's not much to tell, she shrugged. I don't believe that a girl as pretty as you have no stories to tell, he looked at her and then lowered his eyes to the ice cream cone. I went to school like everyone else, and after graduation I entered a teacher training college, because I loved children and knew from childhood that my fate would be connected with them, Mallory began to tell. I see, and I work at the factory, he admitted to her. It's a good profession too, Mallory realized that almost every family lived like that. The factory was the main enterprise in their town, so almost the whole population of the town worked there. Shall we go? He got up from his chair. Yes, she looked at her watch, realizing that tomorrow morning she had to get up early again and a hard day ahead of her. They left the cafe, Harry walked the girl out, they said goodbye at the entrance, agreeing to meet again tomorrow. Mallory can't explain what feelings were inside her. It was a kind of tenderness, a warmth. And even though they had known each other for only two days, but the girl wanted to do something nice for him. She didn't even know what. Now every day when she left work, Harry met her at the gate. On weekends he invited the girl to the movies during the week, sometimes they could go to a cafe. And so they met in the yard, sitting at a table on the benches, telling different stories. Mallory, I have a friend from the army, I want you to meet him, Harry told her. Sure, I don't mind meeting your friends, Mallory didn't mind. Then tomorrow we'll all get together and celebrate our meeting, the boy promised her. The next day Mallory didn't know what to wear, because all the dresses were ordinary, casual, and she was worried that Harry's friends might not appreciate her. But it was all for nothing, because as soon as she stepped out of the driveway, Harry smiled. Why are you so cheerful? She didn't understand. You look really good, he told her and kissed her cheek. Thank you, you should know how I picked out my dress today, she laughed. What's there to choose to prepare? We're all ordinary people, he shrugged. Well, you know, I wanted to make an impression on your friend, Mallory confessed honestly and blushed. I don't get it, I'm not enough for you, you want to be friends with my friend. Harry was joking of course, and they both knew it. And then everything spun, spun very quickly. After meeting Harry's friends, Mallory introduced them to her friend. They started to become friends as a group. For a month, two, three, six months, all was well between the young people. And then the day came when Harry came to Mallory with flowers. You look so handsome today, as if you were going to propose to me. She opened the door for him. How did you know that? He didn't understand. Understand what? She asked him a question. That I came to propose, he stood confused in the threshold of her apartment. No, I did not understand anything, I just assumed, since you are so handsome, in pants, in a shirt with flowers so, and asked about the proposal, she realized that she was ahead of time, and told him what she should not have. Mallory, I love you very much, and I want to live with you for the rest of my life. Will you be my wife? He handed her the ring. Of course, she hugged him. They stood in the hallway for a while and then walked to the kitchen. Harry said he had told his friends what he was going to do, and they suggested we get together and celebrate. 
I don't mind, just let's invite Madi, Mallory said. Of course it's our celebration, you can call whoever you want, he pulled her close to him. From that moment the preparations for the wedding began. They didn't have much money, so they decided to have it at home. There weren't too many friends either, so they couldn't fit everyone in. You know what I was thinking about? Mallory asked Harry a few days before the wedding. What was it? He was looking at her. Where are your parents? She had only recently realized the fact that he still hadn't introduced her to anyone and had never talked about them. Okay, I can ask you a counter question about the same thing, he smiled. I didn't want to tell you about it right away, because not everyone likes orphans, she lowered her eyes, realizing that she still hadn't told him that she had no one. That's why I didn't tell you either, he smiled. It can't be, you were brought up in an orphanage, he asked him. Not much at all, I don't know my father at all, and my mother died when I was 13. At first I was given to my grandmother, but she had a weak heart, and after the death of her daughter, she did not survive it, literally a year I was in a state institution, he told her. Wow, Mallory stopped talking. Will you tell me about yourself, he asked her. Yes, but let's do it some other time, I don't want to spoil my mood just before the wedding, she asked him. Okay. He always agreed with Mallory because he loved and trusted her very much. As the young people expected, everything went well. They signed in the registry office, after that they came home, there they sat at the table, and then adult life began. I see how much you love children, when will we have our own? Once asked Harry Mallory, when it was a year after their wedding. Well, you know that everything is not just done, God willing, there will be children, and no. She lowered her eyes and stopped talking. It was a very sore subject for her. Okay, okay, that's it. Don't get upset. You went up to her and kissed her. Husband and wife continued to work. Once at the daycare center, when Mallory was at work, the kids went to nap time for an hour and she wanted to have tea with her co-workers. When she entered the kitchen, she felt very dizzy and leaned on the wall to avoid fainting. Mallory, are you going on maternity leave? One of her colleagues asked her. I wish I was, but I think not. Mallory had been feeling a little sick herself lately, but she didn't want to think about it so as not to jinx it. So tonight when she got home, she firmly decided that she needed to make a doctor's appointment. She decided not to tell Harry anything until it was clear what was going on with Mallory's body. Hello, she walked into the doctor's office this morning. Come in, the man smiled. After the examination, the doctor invited Mallory back to the table. Well, she waited to see what he had to say. Yes, the doctor wrote something on the card and looked at the patient over his glasses, watching her reaction. Yes, that means, she cried. Don't overreact now. You don't need strong emotions, he realized the pregnancy was wanted. Mallory walked to work. She realized that a new life was now budding inside her, but she still hadn't decided if she was going to tell her co-workers and her husband what was happening to her. You're not like that, Harry approached Mallory in the morning while she was making him coffee. Elusha, I have a surprise for you, but I won't talk about it yet. She looked at him like she always did what she wanted to ask. Okay, a surprise. So a surprise, he came over and kissed her. After that, both of them were packing up and going to work. The friends were supposed to meet up over the weekend. They made plans for the evening. Mallory, you become something else. Maddie came over and whispered to her. Does it really show that much? She realized that her friend wasn't the first person to say that to her. Of course it is, not at Madi. Okay, just be quiet. Mallory pressed a finger to her lips. Pregnant? Her friend glared at her. Uh-huh, nodded Mallory. Girlfriend, I'm so happy for you, exclaimed Madi. Sure, no one knows yet. She made big eyes. Why not? The girl was surprised. I was afraid to jinx it. Mallory admitted honestly. Okay, I think it's a good time to tell it now. Madi was sure of it. Okay, let's go. They went to the room. This was the day Harry found out that he would soon become a father. Love, why did you say something? He picked her up in his arms and started kissing her and circling her around the room. Afraid of jinxing it, she told him honestly. But, that's right, he didn't let his wife out of his arms. I'm so happy for you, Natty even wept. Now that everyone knew about Mallory's situation, she didn't hide from anyone that she couldn't wait for her maternity. One day, when Mallory was already on maternity leave, she became very ill, her blood pressure rose, she felt dizzy and had to go to the hospital. That's where she spent her time until she gave birth. A pretty boy was born, 
who the parents named Carlos. When it was time to go to kindergarten, Mallory did not think at all. She took Carlos in her group. Now they left in the morning and came in the evening together. Come here, son, come to me, his father called to him, and he put the boy on his neck and rode him around the apartment. In winter, the family skated down the slides and built their own snow town. In summer, they went on vacation to the sea, walked in the park, went to the zoo. Parents never left their son without attention, always supported him and his endeavors. Well, son, and it's time to go to school. It's the next stage in your life. It must also pass worthily, said Harry to his son. Yeah, I'm waiting to go to the first line, Carlos answered him. His parents were proud of their son, and they knew that he would not let them down in the future. The whole family went to the lineup. The boy had gladiolus in his hands, which were bigger than he was. Study, son, it will always be useful, his mother told him. Listen to the teacher, then everything will be fine. And Carlos began to study. Elementary school came very easily to him. His mother helped him at first, but then she realized that Carlos could cope with everything by himself and did not interfere in the learning process. Only when her son asked for advice or something, she helped. Mom, I'm going outside to play in the yard, she said, and he went outside. One day he came back, and there was a black eye, his pocket was torn off, his jacket had no sleeve. Jesus, what happened? Mallory came out into the hallway. You see, they started talking about their grandparents, and what can I answer them, if I have no one, almost cried, but the boy held on. My little one, come here, she pressed her son against her. I am not crying, I am strong, he said. In the evening everything was told to the father, the family gathered together in the kitchen. Listen son, sometimes a person has no one at all. And you have us, I think it is not a little, the man began to say. Dad, I know all this myself, it's just, it hurts that they tease for it, Carlos answered them. When the boy was in the last grades, he always told his mom about his dreams. So, what are your dreams and plans for the future? Harry asked him often, he was curious to know too. I think that I will go to the institute, and when I graduate I will become a first-class specialist, the boy said with confidence. It's very good that you have such thoughts in your head. Praise the man. Tomorrow we are going camping with the guys, Carlos told his parents at the end of spring. Great, what do we need for that? My mom started fussing. No, I'll do it myself. The kid didn't want to bother his mom. He and his dad had always helped her with everything. Great, his dad shook his hand. That time there was an unpleasant incident. Although they were all very friendly, the company was not small, the conversation began. It was already evening, the fire was burning. And here is my grandmother, began one. And my grandfather, when there was the Second World War, another one picked him up, and so on, each one said something about his relatives. Carlos, why don't you say something? A friend looked at him. I have no grandparents, he shook his head. And even if they are not alive, but when they were, his friends pestered him. I don't want to talk about it, my mother didn't even know my parents, and my father only had a mother, and she didn't stand out. Okay, his friends left him alone, but the evening was just ruined. The guy went to the tents, they sat down alone, but without a fire was a lot of mosquitoes, so Carlos climbed into the tent, and after a while just fell asleep. Mallory asked him when his son returned the next day. It was fine, you didn't have any emotions. Okay, the woman saw that her son wasn't in the mood, so she left him behind. School years were coming to an end, the young man was completely absorbed in the learning process. He was preparing to enter. Carlos dreamed of medicine. He wanted to enter the institute and study there. The last bell, graduation, and here Carlos is already going with his parents to the neighboring city to submit documents. Everything was easy for him, and now there were no difficulties. Congratulations, son, his parents were happy for him. I congratulate myself too, you told them he was happy that all his dreams were coming true. Now he had a few years of study ahead of him, but he was ready for that too. Carlos was determined, he didn't care about all the difficulties that could happen. He believed he could handle anything, and if it didn't work out, his parents would help him. The first September, a lot of strangers, Carlos met some people who were supposed to study with him in the group. The young man noticed a girl standing near the very porch, he liked her. He realized that she could be in any class, not necessarily with him, he made plans to meet her. Hello, approached him that same day, a young man with whom they were to live together in a dorm room. Hello, Carlos shook his hand, 
He had seen him on watch when they were assigned to rooms. Jack, said the future roommate. Carlos replied the young man. The boys men, they didn't know yet that they would become best friends. Today they checked in, and for tomorrow they were to go to the institute together. What are the plans? Jack asked as they were unpacking. For now, to start studying and then, Carlos shrugged. I see, like everyone else, laughed Jack. For the first three weeks, the young man didn't even go home for the weekend. He studied for his classes, spent long hours in the library, it was difficult, but he had to figure it all out. Hello, may I sit down? A girl came up to him. Carlos looked up and couldn't believe who he saw. It was the same stranger he'd wanted to meet in the beginning. Of course, isn't there enough room for you? He looked around the reading room, where there were only five people. I was told that you took a book, which is the only one here, so I'll sit quietly next to you. She looked at him. Have a seat, he shifted slightly. Natalie, she looked at him and blushed a little. Carlos, the man replied. Okay, nice to meet you, the girl smiled. Me too, he looked into her eyes. Natalie, we study in the same institute, he clarified her. She must have laughed in response. What's so funny? Carlos asked, not understanding. No, nothing, I just didn't intend to talk. I wanted to study and go home, the girl told him in response. I see, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you, Carlos said quietly. He felt uncomfortable because he was asking stupid questions. They were now sitting on opposite sides of the book, he was writing something for himself. Natalie was studying her topic. Let's study now. And then can I walk you out? Carlos asked her. Sure, I don't mind, she shrugged. And when everything was done, they stood up together, closed the book and headed for the exit. I saw you then on the first day we were at the institute. I liked you right away and for some reason I wanted to meet you, the young man told her. Wow, and today I approached you, didn't I? She turned to him. The girl was perky, she was talking, she was talking about something. That's how they got to the place where she lived. Bye, she said to him, waved goodbye and went into the entrance. Carlos remained standing in the street. He stood looking at the entryway doors and couldn't believe that this had really happened to him. He walked home. Inside he was overwhelmed with happiness. The guy knew that he would get to know this girl better and maybe they would even start dating. What's wrong with you? A friend in the dorm noticed that the guy wasn't his usual self. Remember that girl I told you about? The young man sat down on his bed. Oh, the one you wanted to meet. Jack remembered what his friend had told him. Yes, that's the one, Carlos confirmed. So, Jack wanted to know all the details. Well, she came up to me in the reading room today, Carlos confessed. Wow, how did that happen? Jack was very curious now. It was as if fate wanted to bring us together, the roommate shrugged. What are you going to do now? Jack began to ask his friend. I don't know, but when we were saying goodbye, she waved to me and said see you later, which means we'll meet again, he told him. Well friend, I congratulate you of course, now it all depends on you whether you continue to communicate or not, said the comrade. The next day after school Carlos stood outside the institute. He waited for Natalie to come out, and when she appeared, he immediately approached her. What took you so long? He asked her. I stayed to discuss with the teacher a question that I didn't understand, she admitted. And what? Did he explain it? Carlos was also interested in everything that had to do with learning. She shook her head as if she wanted to get rid of the things that were cluttering her head. Shall we go to the park? The young man called her. Let's go, she agreed with him. The king sat down on a bench, and at that moment Carlos decided to find out what was unclear to the girl. Oh, I don't want to burden myself for you, she grumbled. Okay, we'll talk about it later, he agreed with her. Do you know everything? She was surprised. Not everything, but I can tell you that I know a lot, he said. I'll ask for your help next time, she smiled. Today he walked her home again, and they again agreed that they would meet the next day. So, day after day, the young people walked, a strong bond developing between them. Carlos had never said this to Natalie, never asked her to go out, nothing like that. It all happened on its own. They dated, he saw her off, and by New Year's Eve he invited her to visit his parents. Did you tell them anything? She started asking him questions. Yes, I did, and they want to meet you, he told her honestly. At that moment, Natalie realized that she had something to do with this young man. On New Year's Eve, they traveled to his hometown to meet his parents, just as Carlos wanted. Mom, Dad, we're home. 
They entered his apartment. Oh, son, come on in. Your father isn't home yet, but he'll be home soon. Mallory came out into the hallway. She saw Natalie and immediately realized that she was a good girl and she would be a great match for her son. The next day was a holiday. The whole family gathered around the table. Some friends of the parents came, but the young people were also interested. Carlos, I wish you that everything will always be good for you. His father took him aside. Dad, I wish it myself. He looked over and saw Natalie sitting and talking to his mom. Don't be shy. If you need anything, call, ask in anything we can. We'll help you, the man told him. Obligingly, Carlos himself knew that their family was very friendly and they would always help each other. After this trip, the relationship between the couple became even stronger. Natalie, let's get married, Carlos said cheerfully. They were already in their second year. No, we have to get through school first, and then we can talk about it after graduation. My father would never agree to such a thing, the girl said in response. Well, I'm ready to wait for you forever, he looked at his beloved and smiled. And I love you, she looked at him. They were studying, they were doing everything together now. E to the library, she after him, she was given an assignment he helps. Everything was working out for them. At some point, Carlos met Natalie's parents. They accepted the young man. If we get married, we will have two children, a son and a daughter. The young man said dreamily. Wait until you have children, you have to get settled in light first, Natalie told him. Every day they were together as inseparable, some even teased them that way. The third year began, and the young people continued to study well. This New Year's Eve was celebrated together, by the parents of the girl and the boy, as well as their children. So much for getting married, laughed Mallory. She liked the girl's family very much. Yes, everything is so good that one should be afraid of any trouble, said the girl's mother. Spit or you'll spit, said Natalie's father. Come on, he didn't say anything further. The summer after the third year was very hot, the young people were having fun and relaxing. Everyone thought of the couple as husband and wife. Carlos thought that they would always be as happy as they were at this moment. But fate sometimes gives terrible surprises. It was their fourth New Year's Eve. This time the guy surprised everyone again. Immediately after the chime struck, Carlos proposed to his beloved. As soon as you get your diplomas, you can go to the registry office, said the girl's father. Why do we have to wait so long? Harry and Mallory were surprised. All, this is my one condition. There is no more. The man did not want to hear anything. Okay, okay, don't fight. Parents need to listen. Carlos wanted to calm everyone down. Not only was today a holiday, but it was also a proposal, so they didn't want to quarrel at all. They had a good holiday. After that, it was time to go back to school. Now was a difficult period because the educational process was coming to an end. It was necessary to be attentive to everything. When the fourth year was almost at an end, everyone was happy that another year was behind us. Carlos, will you come with us to the countryside? Jack asked his friend. I don't know, I'd have to ask Natalie, he shrugged. You can talk her into it. A friend of his has a cottage outside the city, so we can all go there and celebrate the end of another school year, he told her. Okay, I'll talk to her, Carlos promised. That evening when they met Natalie, he didn't procrastinate and told her his friend's proposal right away. Oh, Carlos, I don't even know. I don't know anyone there except Jack. What am I going to do? She asked her lover. You'll get acquainted. He was surprised because it was the first time that the girl refused from any joint event with her friends. Well, yes, I'll get acquainted. But she was silent. Apparently, there was nothing more to say. So what? I tell Jack we're in. I wanted to make up my mind. Okay, you take it. Say that we agree, but let's agree that if I want to go home, or if I don't like it there, we'll leave right away, Natalie asked her young man. Of course, he didn't even doubt it. Jack was glad when his friend answered him positively, because they hadn't talked for a long time. Carlos was more with Natalie, and he didn't care about his friend. We'll have a friend drive us there, he told Jack. Sure, no problem, his friend agreed. I don't know what to wear, Carlos came to Natalie on the day they were supposed to go to the country house outside the city. Why can't you make up your mind? Put on a casual dress and let's go, he told her. I thought maybe a tracksuit, because nature, mosquitoes, she told him. Please tracksuit dress. You are good in all outfits, he kissed her. Thank you, I love you. She hugged him and started to change. She did wear a tracksuit. It was both comfortable and not so scary. 
That's it, you're ready. The young man took her hand and they went out into the yard. The friend who had promised a ride had indeed arrived at the time they had agreed. Now they were all driving out of town together. When they were already there, they entered the gate. The house was old, small, but in the yard, the owners had done everything very well. There was a barbecue area, an area for rest, a small lawn. The guys moved closer to the brazier. They were engaged in meat, and the girls cut vegetables, arranged them on plates, and also prepared salads. Well, here's to another completed year. Jack stood up and made a toast. Yes, congratulations to everyone. Carlos seconded him. They were discussing something, talking. There were girls and young men in the company. But Natalie didn't get to know anyone. She sat there sad. Why are you like this? Carlos came up to her. I don't know, I'm bored, she answered. Look, everyone's having fun. I don't know why you're bored, the young man told her. Carlos, let's go home, she asked him. Where are you going? You haven't even eaten meat yet. Jack came up to them. Let's stay until dark and then go home, Carlos asked her. Natalie sighed but agreed. After that Jack started to introduce her to the girls so that she would have someone to talk to, and by the evening Natalie was already smiling. You said you were bored, Carlos came up to her. No, I got to know the girls, it's not as boring now as it was in the beginning, but I still want us to go home, she asked her lover. Okay, we'll see we don't have transportation yet, he took her hand and led her back to the table. On the way, she saw a swing and asked her boyfriend to swing her. Let's go, he pulled her there by the hand. In the evening Jack's friends, apparently having had too much alcohol, started fighting. Very loud swearing could be heard. One had broken the other's nose. No one could calm the two fighters down. Carlos, please, let's go home, Natalie frowned. The time was already past midnight. The young man thought that they would not go anywhere, that they would wait until morning, and then the same acquaintance would take them back. Couldn't we wait until morning? He asked her. No, until morning, I don't want to wait. The girl almost stomped her feet. I can drive, came a voice from the crowd. It turns out that while the couple was on the swing, another acquaintance arrived. He was on a motorcycle. I won't let you go with him, Carlos took her hand. And I'll go, I want to go home. It was their first fight. Natalie, you're staying here, there's not much left till morning and we'll all leave together in the morning. Let's not argue, he asked her. I said I'm going home today and I'm going there, the girl said firmly. So go. Carlos turned away. Natalie looked at him with a look that was ready to burn. She turned around and walked proudly toward the man on the bike. Let's go, she told him. Okay, just hold on tight, he answered her. Before morning the brawlers were calmed down, everything was cleaned up, they could go home. The acquaintance who brought them yesterday was standing near the gate. Guys, I think I have some bad news for you, he approached them. What, is something wrong? They asked. Yes. There was an accident further down the road at night, a motorcyclist and a female passenger. He began to tell them. What? Carlos ran forward. Yes, it's the girl who was with you yesterday when I drove you here, the young man muttered. It can't be. Carlos shouted and ran down the road. But the driver quickly jumped into the car, caught up with him, showed him to get in, and they drove on. Medics and police were already working at the scene of the accident. Motorcycle parts were lying around, nothing and no one else was there. Where is everybody? Carlos shouted, where are the passengers? Who are you? One of the uniformed men asked. One I don't know at all, and the other is my fiancé, he said. Unfortunately, I have bad news for you. Both of them crashed to death. The man lowered his head and walked back to where his colleagues were working. No, screamed the guy and fell to his knees right on the road. Get up helped him up by the driver who had brought him here. It's all my fault, the young man shouted. He was on his way home, and he didn't know what to do or how to go on living. In the dormitory, he just lay on the bed and stared at the ceiling. Carlos, get up, they're burying Natalie tomorrow, Jack told him, he too was shocked by everything that was going on. Yeah, he was like a shadow. They drove to where the girl's farewell was to be held. Carlos walked over, he looked at his fee and stayed, and couldn't recognize her. It was from the inscriptions, and from the words of Natalie's parents, but it was not her in the coffin. No, it wasn't her, the young man said he was crying. Carlos, there was nothing to collect, so they did what they could, the girl's father told him. Understandably, when it was all over, 
Carlos packed his things. He didn't want to stay here any longer. Come on, there's not much left, Jack told him. Don't talk, he didn't want to listen to anyone. Okay, it's your life, it's up to you, his friend agreed with him. The boy returned home, his parents were shocked that their son had decided to drop out of school. Son, everything flows, everything changes, time will pass, wounds will heal, and you will ruin your life, his mother told him. No, I've already decided everything, my son didn't want to listen to anyone. They talked the whole evening, then decided that the son has his own hand on his shoulders and did not bother him anymore. Carlos was home for a few days. After that he went back to the city where he studied to pick up his papers. Hi, Jack was packing. He was going home. Hi and bye, Carlos said. You made up your mind after all, didn't you? Yes, but I'm not leaving the city. I'm going to study somewhere else, he said. And where, if it's no secret? Jack asked. On the makeup artist, only not the living. But the dead, said the friend. He stood and looked at his friend. Are you crazy? Jack twisted his head. Maybe you saw Natalie. She wasn't the one lying in the coffin, Carlos told him. Well, friend, I don't understand you at all. I think you're crazy, the roommate said. Okay, think what you want, but it's my decision. Carlos didn't want to hear about anything. I hope our friendship will continue, they hugged. Definitely, confirmed the young man. After the guys broke up, Carlos went to apply to another institute. He was sure he was making the right choice. Jack and Carlos had not seen each other for many years. They didn't know what they each did. They were both working. Jack, hi. There's a medical team meeting at an event. Ah, hello, Anthony. He saw an older man. He worked as a pathologist at the morgue. How are you? Sat down the man with the young man. I'm fine, nodded the man. And at work? Anthony was talking. Nothing, everything is quiet. Jack respected the man. Not so good for me, the man sighed. And what about you? Smiled the young man, thinking how dead people could be bothered. The guy who used to make up corpses quit, and now I don't know what to do, Anthony said. I see Jack shook his head. As the evening wore on, there was no time to talk. When it was over, the medics went home. Jack got up in the morning. He made himself a light breakfast, turned on some music, went to the window and started drinking coffee. Anthony's words about needing a new employee came to mind. Carlos, hi, he called a friend he hadn't seen in a long time. Oh, it's been a long time, Carlos wondered. Where are you now, in town? Jack asked him. Yes, confirmed the institute friend. Can we meet? Jack insisted. Okay, let's do it tonight, they agreed where and when they would meet. The young men arrived at the cafe at almost the same time. Hello, they hugged. How many years has it been? They looked at each other. Yes, who cares? They went inside, sat down at a table, made an order. So tell me, what's the emergency? Carlos looked at his old friend. No, let's go through everything in order, Jack asked. What to tell, remember? I told you that I wanted to go to study makeup, so I went, but for some reason this profession is not much in demand. I got a job in a hospital more, but they wouldn't take me there, so I gave up and went to work in a regular salon. They always need specialists, and I needed this job to earn money, Carlos began to tell him. So you're doing well now? Jack asked him. Well, how can I say it? It's not good. Things are going well. I rent an apartment. I live alone. I haven't found anyone since Natalie. He sighed heavily and lowered his head. Well, don't get upset. Everything will be fine, his friend told him. Carlos wanted to know how his old friend was doing. Strange as it may seem, I'm alone too, of course. I don't work in a salon, but in a hospital. I graduated from the institute, got an internship, now I'm working, Jack said. Well, enough sadness. Let's raise a glass to our meeting they drank. So do you want to know why I called you, Pierre? Jack looked at his friend. Of course I asked you that right away. Carlos looked at him, eager to know what his friend wanted from him. The other day we had a party where I met Anthony. He's a very nice man. He's been in medicine for years. First, he was a surgeon. After he retired, he became a pathologist. And now we need someone to do the makeup for the morgue, Jack said so. You want to offer me a job? Carlos was surprised. Yes, that's exactly what I want to offer you. Jack hadn't told anyone about it yet, because he had to get his friend's consent or refusal first. I don't know, I'm good at the salon, Carlos thought. Well, for now you can come out to us and work at night or in the evenings, 
as it will be convenient for you in your free time. The interlocutor suggested ways out of the situation. Okay, if you recommend me and I'll be taken there, then I'll probably agree. I have an established client base, so I can work on the road, Carlos said. Then it's a deal, Jack held out his hand to Carlos. Yes, it's a deal, they sat in the cafe for a while and then went home, realizing that now they would have to see each other more often. Anthony, I'm here to see you. The next day a young man came to the morgue to see an old acquaintance. Mickey, come in, have you decided that after that event we now have to meet every day? Laughed the man. No, I brought you what I think is good news, smiled the young doctor. Tell me, I'm always happy to have good news, the man told him. I have a friend, Jack began to tell. Can you vouch for him? Anthony immediately asked a question. Yes, he has a medical degree, four courses fully completed, and then it happened that he had to withdraw. Next thing he knew, he was training to be a makeup artist. He wanted to do all this in the more, but they just wouldn't take him, the young man said. Well, well, bring your friend, let's see what he is and how he can do, the man said. That's fine, I'll go and make a phone call and make my friend happy, Jack went back to his room. That same evening he called Carlos, told him everything, he promised to come the next day. Hello. He walked into the morgue. Hello, you must be Carlos. A man looked out of his room. Yes, Jack sent me to you and you must be Anthony. Yes, the man. Yes, we know each other, they shook hands. Well, aren't you afraid of the visitors here? They went to the place where the gurneys with sheets were standing. Why should they be afraid of them? They won't do anything to you. You should be afraid of the living, Carlos grinned. They went about their work. Carlos went to a separate room that had been set aside for him. He pulled back the sheet. There was a girl lying in front of him. He didn't know what she had died of, but her face was frozen, either in a frightened grimace or an angry one. Carlos gave a small massage with his hands to relax the muscles and then began to do his thing. When everything was ready, he called out to Anthony. What? The man answered him. Could you come over here for a moment? Carlos wanted the man to appreciate his work. When Anthony was next to Carlos, the latter pulled back the sheet and the pathologist even flinched. What's the matter with you? He looked at him. Carlos Jesus, what have you done? He couldn't believe his eyes. What's wrong? The young man was frightened. On the contrary, it's just the way you did it. Look at her, it's like she just fell asleep. No one would believe that there's a dead person in the coffin. He looked at the worker as if he had done something bad. Well, thank you, I've never received such praise before, laughed the guy. No, it's not just you and me who need to see this, he called Jack and a few other doctors and when they came and saw what Pasha had done, just like Anthony, they were all shocked. Definitely, we're taking you on, his future employer told him. Carlos now had a permanent job. That said, every time he did his makeup, he remembered Natalie. Well, how are we doing today? Anthony came in every time and greeted Carlos. He really liked the guy. Not only was he very smart, knew a lot about medicine, but he did his job perfectly. Now, when a little time had passed, people began to learn about this master, and everyone wanted his relative to make up Carlos. Especially if the body was after an accident, fire, drowning. That is, when the skin was completely ruined, and Carlos tried. Now he was checking with the relatives who needed eyelash extensions, who needed manicures, who needed pedicures. Some needed nothing at all, just a little makeup on their faces. I never thought there would be a line or an appointment at the more, the older man told Carlos. To be honest, neither did I. Carlos liked working here. It was quiet, no one was in the way, everything was peaceful. Now he was talking to Jack more often. They'd meet up, go out to calves, restaurants. One day, a young girl was brought to the hospital. She was losing a lot of blood. No matter how hard the doctors tried, they couldn't save her. Naturally, she ended up in the morgue. There everyone did their own thing, and when the girl got on the table to Carlos, he was very surprised, because she was so young and beautiful, you can't die at that age. Carlos set to work. At that moment, Anthony walked in to him. Hello. Carlos greeted him. We've already said hello today, he laughed. Well. Why don't I say hello again for the day? Shrugged the young man. Do you want to prepare her for burial? The man asked him. Well, yes, nodded Carlos. I don't think we should do that. She has no one, no relatives, no acquaintances. No matter how many times we call and look, 
There is no one, said the old doctor. Look at her, what a delicate face she has, what delicate features, Carla said of her, as if she were alive. Well, if you just want to do it for yourself, then do it, but know that if she is buried as a derelict, it will be just that, in a closed coffin, no one will even see her, the man said and walked out of there. Now Carlos was looking at this girl, and he was picturing his Natalie. She was just as beautiful, and if he had worked at that morgue back then where they were making up the girl, he would have made her just as beautiful for sure. First, he decided to gather his hair so it wouldn't get in the way when applying makeup. As Carlos was doing this, he tucked the hair back a little near her ear and pulled it back. The ear was black, but it wasn't an injury or anything, it was a mole. Yeah, it looked scary on one hand, but on the other hand it was unusual. He got it done, and when he was done, he called Anthony again. Look, Carlos was so proud of his work. The girl actually, as if she had just covered her eyes, lay down to take a break. Jesus, Carlos, you're scaring me if they're lying here. Blue, some kind of blue, some kind of frostbite, some kind of black. I know they're dead. I'm not afraid of them. But when I look at them after your work, I get scared. What if we bury her now, and she's alive, of course, he laughed. But at the same time, it was no laughing matter. Tell me, when will she be buried? Carlos asked a question. I don't even know, you have to ask others, Anthony shrugged. Okay, I want to take the body and bury it myself, he shared with the man. After being told where to go, he went there, told him, wrote a statement. He had to pay another small fine, but the young man didn't want to give up his decision. Tired, he went home. Today he had two more orders, so he planned everything for a few days. When the customers arrived, of course they didn't know what the young man did besides this job, that he made people beautiful. They thanked him because if he could make the dead beautiful, why couldn't it be done to the living? It worked out even better. His phone rang. It was mom. Hi son, you haven't called or written lately, your father, and I missed you, she told him. Mommy, I've already got a new job, I just didn't want to tell you, of course, I'll definitely come, we'll meet you. Everything will be fine, he promised her. No, my dear, stop feeding us with promises, my father and I have already packed and planned a trip to you, she told him. And when did you plan it? Carlos wondered. Tomorrow, his mother answered. Tomorrow? He didn't understand. Why, aren't you waiting for us, or don't you want to see us? Mallory somehow doubted that her son wanted them to come. No, of course not, what are you saying come, I'll be waiting for you, he said and looked around the room, which was a bachelor's room. After the clients left him, Carlos started a general cleaning. Everything had to be washed, dusted, clothes had to be collected, clothes had to be washed. He was ready for his parents to arrive. The boy called his mother back to ask what time they would arrive. He could go to the train station to meet them, but the woman said they would get there on their own. So he went to work with peace of mind and knew that in the evening he would come home and there they would be, his beloved mom and dad. Today there weren't many who needed a farewell makeup, but still the guy was a little exhausted, driving home tired. He walked up to the driveway, looked up at the windows, there were lights on. His mother and father had the keys a long time ago, when they first came to see him, he had left them behind. Now Carlos walked into his apartment and was overwhelmed by the smells. It smelled like pies and something delicious. It was a divine smell that Carlos hadn't smelled in months. Hey, he walked into the room where his parents were sitting. Carlos, his mom ran up to him and gave him a hug. Me, he smiled. How are you doing? She asked. I'm doing great. How are you? He told her. No, you do not change the subject. My father and I are fine. We work. We still have money. The apartment is fine. What could have changed with us? But how are you? Mom was curious about what's going on in her son's life. I have a new job, he looked at her. Oh, I know your jobs. Where are you working again? She looked and waited for an answer. When for the first time the guy told his mother that he would work in a beauty salon, she was very surprised, because she rarely heard that men work, doing hair, manicures, pedicures, and makeup for women. The father didn't talk to his son at all at first, he thought his son had changed his orientation after the stress and loss of his fiancé. But now, as soon as they get used to him working somewhere, the son is changing his profession. If I tell you now, don't be alarmed, Carlos said. Listen, after you told me that you work in a beauty salon, I'm not afraid of anything, his father replied. Now I work in a morgue, the young man said. What, you're back in medicine? They didn't understand. 
Well, you could say that, Carlos avoided answering. So come on, tell me more about it, said Mallory and sat down opposite her son. Or maybe we'll go to the kitchen, and while we drink tea, eat and everything else, I'll tell you what happened in my life. Carlos was already exhausted from hunger, from the odors that lingered in the apartment. Of course, let's go, his mom smiled. They went to the kitchen, sat down at the table. The woman began to put in plates for her son and husband. She had tried very hard today, so she knew that everything would be delicious. Carlos rolled his eyes as he ate. Eat, 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 come on and tell me about it, because you make a secret out of your stories about your work. The woman sat and admired what her son had become. So, you know, I was working as a makeup artist, and then Jack called me, and he told them how he got the job, and how his labor is appreciated now. Son, aren't you scared? His mom asked him. Why should I be afraid? Of course not, he told her. Oh, I don't know, to work with dead people. It's very scary for me. The woman took her head. Do you want me to show you pictures of those whom I have already painted? The son asked his mother. Well, if you have something to show, and it's really worthwhile, then sure, go ahead, she told him. The young man showed some pictures on his phone. The mother and father were also amazed that indeed, these dead people didn't look like dead people at all. They praised him. The dinner went on. And you know what, I only went into this profession because of Natalie, because when she was brought in, she didn't look like herself at all. And then, just recently, they brought in a girl, her name is Betty, and she's so young, so beautiful, and she left at that age. I don't know why, but I gave her a farewell makeover, even though I didn't have to. I was told she was a derelict, she'd be buried like that. Mom, Dad, don't think I'm crazy. I decided to take on this mission and bury the girl, he looked at his parents. Why did you suddenly decide to do that? His father looked at him. Yes, of course we realize that this is a good deed and that maybe you will put some plus in your karma, but do you know how much funerals cost now? Asked his mother. Mom, she reminded me so much of Natalie, not in looks, but in her youth and beauty and everything else, that I couldn't stop, Carlos continued to say. He was now turned away at the window, staring at one point, tears in his eyes. I see no, we are not judging you. Do as you see fit. My mother knew from childhood that it was better not to argue with Carlos. If he had something in his head, it could not affect his decision. Carlos rolled his eyes as he ate. Eat, 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 come on, and tell me about it, because you make a secret out of your stories about your work. The woman sat and admired what her son had become. So, you know, I was working as a makeup artist, and then Jack called me, and he told them how he got the job, and how his labor is appreciated now. Son, aren't you scared? His mom asked him. Why should I be afraid? Of course not, he told her. Oh, I don't know, to work with dead people, it's very scary for me. The woman took her head. Do you want me to show you pictures of those whom I have already painted? The son asked his mother. Well, if you have something to show and it's really worthwhile, then sure, go ahead, she told him. The young man showed some pictures on his phone. The mother and father were also amazed that indeed these dead people didn't look like dead people at all. They praised him. The dinner went on. And you know what, I only went into this profession because of Natalie, because when she was brought in, she didn't look like herself at all. And then, just recently, they brought in a girl, her name is Betty, and she's so young, so beautiful, and she left at that age. I don't know why, but I gave her a farewell makeover, even though I didn't have to. I was told she was a derelict, she'd be buried like that. Mom, Dad, don't think I'm crazy. I decided to take on this mission and bury the girl, he looked at his parents. Why did you suddenly decide to do that? His father looked at him. Yes, of course we realize that this is a good deed and that maybe you will put some plus in your karma, but do you know how much funerals cost now? Asked his mother. Mom. She reminded me so much of Natalie, not in looks, but in her youth and beauty and everything else, that I couldn't stop, Carlos continued to say. He was now turned away at the window, staring at one point, tears in his eyes. I see no, we are not judging you. Do as you see fit, my mother knew from childhood that it was better not to argue with Carlos. If he had something in his head, it could not affect his decision. Will you be here these days? He asked them. Of course, we didn't come here for one day, mom said. Well, then you will help me, he said. Of course we will, son. Don't even think about it, his mother promised him. After that, she got up from the chair and began to pour tea. Ah, yes. You know why else I remember this girl? Look the boy at the woman. 
and why, Mallory stood looking at her son and couldn't believe they were talking about dead people. She had a peculiar mole on her ear, as if her ear was black, whether it was frozen or burned or something. But it was really a mole, he remembered and ran his finger across the table, showing what it was. What? His mother looked at him. What did I say? Carlos didn't understand. Tell me again, what kind of mole was it? She asked him. Well, I told you, it's like a burnt ear on the edge. Even when I first took my hair out, I was scared. And then I realized that it was actually a mole, he explained to his mother again. Can we go to the morgue right now to look at it? Mallory was very worried. She was going over the mug in her hands. Then she started putting sugar in her tea, stirring it. Just got up from her chair, started pacing back and forth. Mallory, what's the matter with you? Her husband came up to her. Anthony, I'll tell you everything later, please. Let's go there now, the woman begged her men. But it's too late now, Carlos told her. Let's go tomorrow morning. I will go to work and you will come with me. Okay, I agree to go tomorrow, but I don't know if I'll live to see it or not, the woman said quietly. Mom, explain what happened. No one could understand anything, only Mallory. She was running from corner to corner. She was scrubbing the dishes or wiping the dust or stirring something in the pot, though nothing was boiling, just standing on the stove. My dears, believe me, I will tell you everything, 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 but only after I see this girl, she said. Son, let's go to the balcony, let's talk, called the young man's father. They went to the balcony, stood looking at each other. Dad, what's wrong with mom? Carlos asked then. Who knows, I've never seen her like that, and she never told me anything about it, Harry said, and it was true. Okay, let's wait until morning, if she says she'll tell me later, maybe she will, Carlos shrugged. They went back to the room and now everyone was getting ready for bed. Carlos heard some rustling in the hallway, he looked out, his mother was getting dressed. Where are you going? He asked her. Can I go outside for some fresh air? She said to the women, opened the door, and went outside. Do you want me to come with you? Her son asked her. No, don't. I'll sit on a bench near the entrance. I'll feel better, and I'll come back up. Today with a woman who was always calm, reasonable, kind. Something happened that no one could understand. She went outside as she said she would, sat on a bench for a few minutes, then went back home. Kratos heard the couch creak. His mother was tossing and turning and had been up all night. In the morning he saw dark circles under her eyes, a tired face. Mom, didn't you sleep? He asked her. How can you sleep here? Let's hurry up. Get ready. Let's go to your work. She hurried her son. They arrived at the place where the young man worked. At first Anthony didn't want to let them all in together, but when Carlos explained to him what the problem was, he, like everyone else, didn't understand anything, shrugged his shoulders and let only Mallory in. He led her in himself, to the young girl Carlos was making beautiful. They went in, he pulled back the sheet, and the woman just cried. Did you know her? Anthony asked his co-worker's mother. I don't know, but I think I did, she mumbled. At that moment, Carlos entered the building. He was standing behind his mother, and he heard those words. Mom, how could you know her? You lived in different cities, she's young, he told her, and he didn't understand anything at all. So we'll come home now, and I'll tell you everything. Everything, everything, my mother came up to him and hugged him. She was crying more and more. So, will you help me with the funeral? He asked his parents when they were outside. Yes, absolutely. Even if it's a complete stranger, we'll still bury this girl, said Mallory. Okay, that's at home? Harry looked at his wife. Yes, Carlos, are you coming with us? The mother hoped he was going now because she needed to tell them her story. No, I have some work to do. But I'll be there soon, he promised his parents. Okay, we'll wait for you. The mother looked at her son as if something had happened in their family. They drove home. Carlos went back to the morgue. Anthony was already waiting for him. What's going on? He asked. I don't know myself, Carlos shook his head. From your mother's reaction, you think she found her daughter, the pathologist said. She promises to tell us everything when we all get home. If it's not too bad, I'll be sure to tell you everything. The young colleague promised him. That's fine, don't be late, there seems to be no one today. Go home, stay with your parents, remember that you have a funeral tomorrow, he winked at him. Okay, I'll definitely pay for everything today, we'll pick up the body tomorrow, the guy promised him. He left the building. At first he wanted to call Jack and tell him what was going on, 
But then he thought, why introduce intrigue now, if he could tell everything from beginning to end later? He arrived home. His mother and father were sitting in the room. On the coffee table was a porcelain teapot with boiling water, with cups around it. It was obvious that his mother was preparing for a serious conversation. Carlos took off his jacket, hummed up in the hallway, and sat down with the others at the table. My dears, I never told this story because I didn't want to remember. Not only didn't want to remember, but I didn't want to bring up all the past I had. Mallory began to say. Mom, can we get to the point? Carlos looked at her. No, I want to get to the point, she said. Okay, we're listening, agreed the family. I was born into an ordinary family. I had a daddy and a mommy. I don't know, but I think they love me. I mean, how can you not love your child? Three years later, my little sister was born. Mallory began to tell me. Wow, Carlos, you know, even I don't know this story. A long time ago, your mother promised me that she would tell me about her parents, about life in the orphanage. But that would be sometime later. I don't even believe that I was able to wait so many years to find out, my father said, not with regret, but with surprise. Well, so what happened next? Hurried her son, because he could not tolerate until his mother continued the conversation. I don't know what my father did, because when we were very young he did something, he was put in jail, and then only my mother received a letter that my father had been stabbed there. Then his mother's heart failed, she died, and it turned out that we were left with just the three of us, me, my mother, and my sister. Mallory took the handkerchief out of her pocket and dabbed her eyes. Well, let's not get wet here, her husband told her. You have no idea how hard this story is for me. I've never even remembered it to keep from crying. And now I have to tell it, the wife answered him. So what happened then? Harry nodded his head. And then I went to school, and when we were in the second grade, our class teacher was offered to take us to a neighboring town for a field trip, said Mallory and the tears just rolled from her eyes like water from a faucet that couldn't be stopped. Mommy, maybe you don't want to tell this story. Maybe you need some valerian? Carlos asked her and sat closer to her. Yes, valerianka you can, but the story to tell me you need to tell. They waited until the young man went to the kitchen, diluted everything in a glass, brought it back, gave it to his mother, and only then she continued. Speak, the eyes of her family looked at her. I don't know how it happened but my mother persuaded the teacher to take Maria, my younger sister, with her as well. I remember that the teacher was crying. She didn't want to go with us because she was afraid that so many small children were with her. To calm her down, they gave her two parents to help her. So we went. Everything was interesting. When we arrived, they could hardly catch us. We were scattering in different directions, not behaving very well. It is understandable, small children, what they wanted from us. Sobbed Nalori again so that neither the man nor the son did not want to listen to this story. They felt sorry for the woman, saw how bad she felt. Mom, let's continue tomorrow, because we see that you are very bad. Carlos was afraid for her. No, I want to tell everything now, the woman insisted. Okay, we're listening to you, the men agreed again. And so, when we were on the tour, everything was fine. I sat on the bus and braided my little sister's hair. Her hair was white. I braided her pigtails on both sides and red bows underneath, Nalori said fondly. Good, her husband and son listened attentively. We got off the bus, we were either at the market or at the train station, I don't remember now. Everyone scattered in different directions, the educators and parents tried to catch us, but they couldn't, and then when we got on the bus, I saw that Maria was nowhere to be found, she was sobbing again. And what did you do then? Startled Harry. He knew roughly what the story was about to be about next. I ran up to our teacher and told her that my little sister wasn't with us, but at that moment, two other boys ran away. Their parents were looking for them, and the teacher also threw all her energies to find her two students. I realized that Maria didn't care right now. When I got off the bus, I saw gypsies walking around. Immediately I thought the scariest thing, the same children in childhood are scared that gypsies will steal you. So I thought she'd been stolen by gypsies. I went to the teacher again, but no one would listen to me. When the boys were found, we came and found two men in uniform. It was the police. They told me to leave them a statement. Mallory started to speak very quickly because she was very worried. Wow, a story, muttered the son. Mom looked at Carlos. Yes, I was little then, and I didn't understand much, but I saw that the teacher was writing some statements and the parents were signing them. All the other kids were waiting on the bus. I cried. 
I called for Maria. I hoped she would come back, but she never came. When we got home, I cried all the way home. The woman stopped talking and began to sob, apparently remembering the day it all happened. Mom don't, Carlos hugged her. I understand everything, I have long since come to terms with it, but still, when I see girls with white pigtails, I cannot forgive myself for what happened then, continued sobbing. Okay, Carlos, leave her alone. What happened next? My husband got closer, he wanted to hear the rest of it. And then we got to the school. All the other parents were there, including my mom. When I got off the bus alone, she ran up to the teacher and asked where my sister was, to which she only lowered her eyes. Of course, then my mom was told everything, and she ran to the principal to sort things out. They wrote some statements, there were various complaints. In the end, our teacher was fired from the school. But the worst thing was, you know what? She looked up at her son and husband. What was it? They asked, though they had guessed it. Maria still hadn't found it. No matter how hard our law enforcement worked, they did nothing. Mallory cried at the table, her son and husband comforting the woman as best they could. She got up and walked out into the hallway. Is that all, or is there anything else you want to tell us? Harry looked at her. Then, when Carlos said he wanted to go to the town where my sister was lost, I couldn't get over it for a long time, but I did. And now, she stopped talking and cried hard again. What now? That was the most important moment in the story that men wanted to hear. You said about this girl, about her mole on her ear, she muttered. I don't understand. Carlos shook his head. Now, Mallory got up from her seat, went into the hallway, brought her bag from there, and pulled out a bundle from the lining. It was an old newspaper. She unfolded it. There was a small picture of a little girl laughing and looking at her sister. Look, that's me and that's Maria, she looked up at Carlos. No way, even though the picture was black and white, he could see that black ear, which was the same as that girl in the morgue. Do you understand now why I was so hysterical? She looked at her favorite men. But there are coincidences in life. Maybe someone has the same mole, suggested the son. Carlos, my darling, my darling, please, began to beg his mother, but he did not understand what she meant. Look, she pointed to the same newspaper where the photos were. There was a small piece of hair. So what? He didn't understand. Let's do an examination. What if? Mallory was silent again. Well, you do realize it's not your sister, don't you? Harry told her. Of course I realize it's not my sister, but maybe it's her daughter, Mallory said with hope in her voice. Okay, that's not too hard to do, Carlos replied. He took the newspaper, racked it all back up and put it away. Can we not wait until tomorrow? The woman asked. What do you think? Do you think someone will get up in the night and start doing tests? Carlos smirked. Okay, Mallory, I think this can wait for a few more hours. You better tell me what happened next. Harry sat on the couch and held his wife's hand. Nothing good happened next. When Maria couldn't be found, my mom's heart gave out. I was put in an orphanage. I was raised there from then on. She said as she sat there, her hands folded together, rocking back and forth. Yeah, it was hard on you. Harry felt sorry for her. While she was little, just remembering the incident and then I started looking for it, kept talking and crying Mallory. So what? The parents were in the room and Carlos called Jack. Hi, you know, we have such a family story. He didn't go into details, just said that when it was over, he would tell him. So, so far, my friend didn't understand anything. Look, can you help with the forensics? Carlos was waiting for his answer. Of course, if everything is there, why not help? Was ready to fulfill the request. Then agreed, they said goodbye, and Carlos went to tell his parents everything. When it was late evening, the mother, father, and their son were still sitting at the table. It was so amazing that such a story had happened in their family. Agree, son. Such birthmarks do not just happen. That's why they are called so, said through tears the woman. Yes, but we still need to check everything. Tomorrow I'll go to work. I'll do everything. Then I'll find out where this Betty lived, and maybe we'll be able to find out something about her, Carlos told his plans for the next day. Okay, the parents nodded. Practically in unison. Can you imagine if it turns out to be my sister's daughter? The mother looked up at Carlos. You know, I always hope for something. Never think about good things, so that if it turns out badly, so as not to be upset, Carlos told her. You know how long ago I stopped hoping for that, just now that there is such hope. Why not think about it, the woman said. Okay, 
I will not change your mind, let's go to bed, tomorrow we will do everything, and it will be clear after a while. The young man now thought that tomorrow will be a difficult day, also the funeral. The son wished his mother and father good night, and lay down himself to get some rest at least. He heard that a man and a woman were also settling down for the night. Everyone seemed to have calmed down. Mom had drunk so much sedative that she didn't need to be persuaded to lie down now. Good morning, the young man woke up in the morning. Hi, mom was already in the kitchen, she was cooking something. Why are you up so early, you should be resting, said her son. I can't sleep with all this going on around me, the woman said. Carlos was only afraid that she would start crying again. I'm off to work, drank coffee, and ate breakfast young man. Good luck, call us when you need us, she told him, because she knew they would be burying Nina today. Carlos got to work, he handed Jack all the things they had talked about yesterday, and then found the girls' papers. The first thing they did was drive to the cemetery where the girl's body had already been delivered by the funeral service. Bye-bye native, Lori approached her as she said goodbye. Maybe not her own yet, her husband took her under the elbow. Even so still, Mallory couldn't rest. After the cemetery, her parents drove home and Carlos went back to work, he had more to learn. He went through Betty's papers, found out where she lived before the terrible thing happened to her, called Jack. Buddy, can you help? I do it all myself. I just can't. It's too hard, he asked him. Sure, what do you need to do? He was always ready to help. Come down, I'll tell you everything, Carlos asked him. When the comrade went outside, they went to the address that Pasha had, on the way he told his friend everything. Wow, this happens in life? He looked surprised at his friend. And you thought, only in the movies? Laughed the young man. And what your mother was so long silent, now there is everything, the internet, different programs, surprised the young man. I don't know honestly, Carlos shook his head, he was already thinking about it. They found the house that was indicated in the documents, went up to the floor. Naturally, they didn't call Betty's apartment, they knew no one would open the door, but the neighbors might know something. Who's there? They heard a woman's voice from behind the door. Open up please, we need to talk to you about the neighbors, Carlos said loudly. Who? An old woman opened the door. About Nina from the neighboring apartment, said the young man. Come in, she let Carlos and Jack in. Aren't you afraid to let two foreheads in the house? Jack asked her. I'm not afraid now, the woman smiled. Well, thanks for opening the door, we'd like to know something about her, Carlos said, at which point his phone rang. He picked up the phone, walked out into the hallway, it was his mom. Hey, what do you want? He answered quickly. Where are you? The woman asked him. We came to the place where Betty used to live. We're talking to the neighbors. Carlos said quickly. He saw that Jack had already started talking to the neighbor. He didn't want to miss anything. Give us the address. We'll be right there. The woman begged. Carlos did not hide anything. He named the street, house and apartment. He asked KB not to tell anything yet. To wait for the woman. She started making tea and pulling things out of the cupboards. Tell me, who is Betty to you? My grandmother asked by the way. We don't know yet, Carlos said sadly, and there was a knock at the door. It was Mallory. Hi. Come in, a young man opened the door. Harry and Mallory walked into the kitchen, they sat down with everyone else at the table. Katie didn't understand what these people wanted, or why they were now sitting in her apartment drinking tea. So what happened to Betty? Carlos finally asked her. Oh, Betty was a lost woman, the woman waved her hand. Can we go in order? Harry asked, because he realized that he was about to hear another incomprehensible story. She came to us about five years ago, small, thin, rented an apartment. Then it started. The landlady stopped talking. What started happening? Mallory couldn't take it anymore. What? 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 She began to leave men. Then one. Then another. And her husband, it turned out, was in prison, so he came back. After a few months it became noticeable that the girl's belly was growing, and her husband disappeared again, Katie said excitedly. So Betty has a baby? Mallory asked, and jumped up from the table. Yes, she does, nodded affirmatively. Where is he? It was only when she asked that question that she realized the woman had asked a stupid question. So, you had to be in order. So then, even with a belly, Kakali did not stop going to her. One day, I hear a child moaning. I went knock, no one opens, I think, maybe it seemed. But no, 
At night such a howl rose that it was clear, the child is home, and the mother is not, continued the woman. And what happened next? Jack was curious too. Called the police they came, they began to break down the doors, the child screams like crazy, continued the grandmother. And? Couldn't wait for the guests to tell a coherent story. And that's it, they opened, and Beatty in the kitchen lies, around all in blood, the child in the room on the floor, crying, sighed the woman. Everything is falling into place now, Carlos said quietly. He was the one who talked about why she lost a lot of blood and couldn't be saved, it was just, time was running out. Do you know where they took them? Mallory asked quietly. Wait, if she was taken to our department, then the child should have been examined there, Jack spoke up. Then why are we sitting here? Let's go to you. Bat up from the table, Mallory. And why go? You could just call. The young man took out his phone from his pocket. Okay, agreed Mallory. She was not very old, but now she was so worried that others thought she was about to faint. Do you have any sedatives? Carlos asked Katie. Yes, right away she opened the closet and started to pull out some jars. At that moment Jack called the hospital. He asked who admitted the girl who examined the baby and where he might be taken next. It turned out that at first he had been brought to a baby home and then he was to be distributed further. We're going there, Mallory wasn't going to back down. Mom, maybe we'll wait for the DNA test and if it confirms that you were related, then we'll go there. Right now we're just hurting the kid's feelings. By the way, how old is she? He looked at the landlady. Yes, about three or four years old, no more, she answered. All is clear, the guests gathered, left the apartment. Now they were riding in the car home. Mallory was crying. Well, why are you raising flame again? Took her husband by the hand. Harry, I have to go to work in two days, which means I can't be here. Carlos is going to have to do everything himself, and he doesn't look like he really wants to, the woman said. All right, everyone calm down. Everything is fine. Now we will wait for the DNA test. If it is really confirmed that it is the mother, your relatives, then we go to the same orphanage, the address of which we have and ask where the girl was distributed, the young man said calmly. Okay, and what next? She asked. Well, and what next? After that we do an analysis of the girl and you, and if again confirm that you are relatives, then everything is at your discretion. Carlos could not understand why his mother does not understand him. Okay, I agree, but time is going so slowly, a tear rolled down from her eyes. Everything, Dad. Please make Mom happy. Carlos looked at his father. I will certainly try, I will do everything for that, but after so many years such secrets are revealed, I don't even know how she will survive and sleep, answered his father honestly. After they arrived home, everyone was silent. Mom, tell me, what do you think? Her son sat next to her. What should I think, you know, if this is my grandniece, said the woman. And what, are we going to take her out of the orphanage? Carlos realized he was asking a stupid question, but he couldn't help asking it. What do you think? The mother pressed her lips together. I don't know what I would do, the young man replied. Well, and I'll tell you that I will definitely take this girl from the orphanage. Can you imagine how long I've been looking for my sister, and now I'm going to find her granddaughter and keep her, she told him. No, you're doing the right thing. It's just that we don't know her family tree, Carlos replied. The most important thing is that if we find out that she is my sister's granddaughter, I don't care about the rest. The boy realized that he couldn't argue with his mother. What she has in her head now, she will fulfill it. Which meant all that was left to do was wait a few more days. His parents were visiting. Afterward, they packed up and went home. Carlos continued to work. He came to work in the morning as usual, Ned Anthony. So, will you tell me your story? The man asked him. Why not? He answered him. Well, waited for Carlos to begin his story. You have no idea what I'm about to tell you. It was the second person, after Jack, to whom he told the story. It was like something out of a movie. Wow, Anthony sat back in his chair when he heard the rest of it. And what do you think, do you think it's true or not? Carlos asked him. Well, we have to wait for the expertise, the man only shook his head. Well, we'll wait for it, and I'm even sure that it will be in our favor. Yes, your mother screwed up and could have caught this girl alive, Anthony said. After that, the days dragged on and on. Mom called every day. She asked how things were going, how the examination was going. But Carlos couldn't answer any of her questions because he hadn't done it and didn't know how it was going. And then three weeks later, he got a call from Jack. 
Hey, buddy. I hope you're with good news, Carlos answered him. Well, the fact that the examination is ready, I think that's good news for you. But what's inside I haven't looked at, honestly admitted the comrade. Okay, I'll be right there. Carlos hung up the phone and headed toward the office. When he held the envelope in his hands, he didn't know what to do. To call his mother and get her here or to wait and then see the results, or to look at it himself and then tell his mom. Since Carlos couldn't decide, he dialed his mother's number. Mom, hi, he told her. I don't like the sound of your voice, she said. The forensics came back, he stopped talking. Well, don't be silent, what is it? She asked, thinking that her son had already seen everything. I did not open the envelope, I want to ask you, maybe you come and we'll look at it together. Or should I just give you the word? He asked the woman. Put the envelope down and don't touch it until we get there, mom commanded. The young man did just that. He didn't want to take responsibility for the whole story at all. If his mother had started it, let her finish it. Mallory and Tony didn't arrive until the next day. Now they were all sitting in the kitchen together again. Jack was here too. Why are you here? Cardos laughed at him. I was just curious. If I had already gotten into this story with you, why don't I know what happened before the end? Answered the young man. Okay, well mom, open the envelope. His son looked at her. The woman, with trembling hands, took it. She began to unseal it, and when she took out the paper, her hands were shaking so much that it was impossible to see anything. Possibility of parentage, she read, 99 and 9%. As she placed the envelope on the table, tears flowed from her eyes. She realized she had found her relatives and lost them all at once, but there was still hope for her granddaughter. Jack and Carlos were in complete shock now, and the same could be said for Harry. They had no idea that this could be, so they got together and drove to the very same orphanage where they had brought the girl after the hospital. I don't have to tell you where the girl lived. The principal talked to them. Here, look, it's her mother's DNA and mine, Mallory said. She always had a way of making people feel comfortable, but today it wasn't working. Okay, I'll give you this address, but you haven't seen me, you haven't heard from me, and you shouldn't be doing this at all. She wrote something on a piece of paper and handed it to Carlos. Thank you very much. The people in the office stood up. They were about to have another conversation with another principal. It was in the same city, just in a different neighborhood. Together they arrived at the orphanage. Hello, Mallory walked in. She was determined. We want to adopt a child. Woman, calm down. The director looked at her. First of all, why so late? Secondly, what are the conditions? Yes, you understand, through tears, worry, anxiety, and everything else Mallory told her her story show her the DNA tests. You understand that now you need to fill out a lot of documents, collect all the certificates and once again undergo an examination with the girl to prove that you are really her grandmother, the woman said. Everything will be done, can we see her? The woman asked. Yes, come back tomorrow, the principal shook her head. The next day, the first thing Mallory did was go to the toy store. She bought not only gifts for her granddaughter, but also for the other children. Now she and Tony arrived at the orphanage together and she saw her. She didn't even have to show her, she had the exact same birthmark on her ear as her mother. Hi, what's your name? Mallory leaned over to the girl. Sarah, she said. Soraka, are you coming to live with us? She looked at her husband. And who are you? The girl asked the woman. I, your grandmother, smiled Mallory to her. Yes, I will go, will they let me go? Asked the little girl. Everyone was watching from the sidelines watching this conversation. It was so cute. From that day on, Mallory was at the girl's house every day, when they finally got the results of the examination. There was a trial, and it was decided to give the girl to her grandmother. I don't believe everything that happened, Mallory said, when she and her husband and the girl arrived home. Mom, Carlos hugged her, he was by their side for the time being. Carlos, imagine if you had then... The woman fell silent. Okay, let's put it this way, would not have dropped out of the institute, smiled the young man. All these years Carlos had thought only about the fact that before his Natalie had died, they'd had a fight and she presented him. And now for some reason, it was her that reminded him of this very same Betty. He could have left her out of his makeup, but for some reason he did, and he saw that birthmark. Something happened that most people wouldn't believe, but for some reason Carlos thinks Natalie did it all. It's like she recognized his mother's story, and she couldn't stay away, so she went out of her way to help. 
Now he was at Mallory's house for the weekend. What are you going to do? Her son asked her. I don't know, I'll probably work at the daycare center until Sarah goes there and then. When the girl goes to school, I'll take a well-deserved vacation, the woman said. That's great, will you come to my place? He asked his mother. Sure, right. She looked at her granddaughter. Yes, the girl confirmed. They stayed home and Carlos went back to work. He continued his business, which he loved very much, and he would never trade it for anything. Could you please pass the fare? A girl asked him one day on the trolley bus. Yes, of course, Carlos turned around and Natalie was standing in front of him. He handed her the money and the ticket back, but he kept looking at her. Why are you looking at her like that? She asked. Natalie? He couldn't believe this was happening. But what had been happening to him lately didn't surprise him anymore. No, Ariana, she smiled. Maybe it was also the girl who forgave the guy, sent him a new acquaintance who owed me, in Carlos' opinion, looked like Natalia. Hi, I'm Carlos. Even though the trolleybus cabin was very crowded, they got acquainted quietly. I've never met on a trolleybus, she smiled. Let's get off at the next stop, the young man suggested. I'll be late for work, she admitted. So am I, but just can't talk to you. He just couldn't miss this chance. The girl agreed, they went out, took a walk, agreed to meet the next day, and then he walked her to work. Mom, I'll probably soon come to you with my fiancé, he called the woman, asked how she was doing. Where did you get her, your fiancé? Mallory was surprised. I just met her. A fiancé right away? The woman didn't understand. I won't drag it out this time, he told her. Vid will be looking forward to seeing you. Sarah sent her regards. She could hear her mother smiling. Hi to her too. How are you guys doing? The young man wondered. Great, the girl turned out to be very smart. She grasped everything on the fly, began to tell the mom. We are definitely going to visit. But Ariana doesn't know about it yet, Carlos said. He was going to buy a ring and propose to her this weekend. Could it be that working at the morgue had affected my life? Carlos asked Anthony. I don't know I'm here too, but nothing's going on, he shrugged. Well, let's hope that all these miracles happen because of my good attitude towards these poor people, he nodded at those who were lying here. Anything is possible, Anthony agreed. In the evening Carlos called Jack, invited him to the restaurant, there he told him how Sarah was living, that he had met Ariana, and that he wanted to propose this weekend. Have you lost your mind? I think I have been for a long time, he smiled back. Okay friend, I'll always be there for you, Jack clapped him on the shoulder. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel, like it, write comments if you like the story, and see you on the channel.